So this can be verified using the previous example above here where A and B are 12 and 18 respectively and LCM is already found to be 36 and HCF is already found to be 6. So let's see if this verifies very much for any numbers, any two numbers A and B. Therefore, as I already found the LCM of two numbers 12 and 18 to be 36, then 36 times of the HCF which is 6 must be equal to the product of the numbers which is 12 times of 18. And as I clearly see that 36 multiplied with 6 is 216 and 12 eights are 56, 12 ones, 12, 12 eights, 96, 12 ones, 216, which is clearly true. Therefore, this theorem, this formula holds true for any two numbers taken into consideration. And therefore, this supports the statement. Now, let's see how we can convert the given decimal into the rational form, that is P by Q form. We have already discussed about rational numbers as the numbers which can be expressed in the form of P by Q, where P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to zero. The definition has already been discussed in the previous session. So today we'll see how we can convert the any, any sort of decimal into the rational form the p by q form. So let's start with an example problem. So converting decimals to rational form. So let's take an example problem and see how a decimal number can be converted to its respective rational form. A rational number. For example, if I have 0 0.125 as the number, then this is clearly in the decimal place is a decimal number with three values after the decimal. So 0 0.125 can be expressed in rational form by simply taking this with 125, whatever is there after the decimal, I just write down. And then because I have the decimal here, when I want to move the decimal three units to the right, I divide by 1000 as we already discussed in the lower classes. Moving of the decimal to the right makes me divide with 10 each time you jump from 1, 2 and 3. So three steps out here, 1, 2 and 3. Therefore, I get 10 power 3. If I need to move five steps to the right, then I write this as 10 power 5. So moving to the right with divide with 10 power n, and moving to the left would be multiplied with 10 power n and therefore here I get this as 125 by 1000 which is a rational number because p by q form with p and q as integers and q is not equal to 0 q being 1000 out here so this is how I convert the given decimal into rational form but how do I give the most simplified answer for this I wanted the most simplified answer for 125 divided by 1000. So in this case, when I want to further simplify, I clearly understand that I can divide this with 5. When I get this as 5 2s are 10, 5 5s, 5 2 hundreds, 5 5s, 5 40s, 5 ones, 5 8. Therefore, the most simplified answer for this is 1 over 8. So the rational number corresponding to the decimal 0 0.125 is said to be either 125 by 1000 or when simplified further, the most simplified answer being 1 over 8 is the answer for the given concept. So this is identified to be the rational number. So let's take another example which supports conversion from decimal to the rational number. Now this is the number which I wanted to convert to the rational form. So in this case, I just understand that I need to move my decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's a five step process to move this decimal to the right to make P as an integer. So therefore, when I have this 1, then because I move five steps to the right, I simply raise 10 to the power 5. And then I get this to be 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
is 1 lakh. 1 over 1 lakh is the rational value for the given decimal 0 0.00001. Yes. Now we have discussed about converting the decimal to the rational form. Also, we have to dis decide on what we conclude from seeing different answers. So definitely, I would like to take one more example to make a conclusion on the relation between the numerator and denominator of the rational numbers when converted from decimals onto the respective rational form. So when I take 53.25 and then if I take 53.24 and I convert this into the rational form then because the decimal has to move two steps to the right I understand this as 5324 by 10 square which is 100 and this on further simplification gives me 250s 2 twos are 4 13 2 6 2 6 2 twos, 25 so 1331 by 25 is the most simplified answer for the given decimal so as I see in each of the cases there should be some conclusion which I need to make between the relation between the numerator and the denominator so using the different examples I make the following conclusion which acts as a theorem so if any decimal value which terminates because in every case I have taken those values and decimal values which terminate they have some ending out there so the limited decimal value if any decimal value terminates then its rational form then it can be expressed it can be expressed in rational form p by q and not only that and also its prime rational form and also its most simplified answer will be and its p and q will be co primes now co primes are those values which are considered to be when the gcd of those two numbers is 1 so when do i say that two numbers are co prime if i say that two values are co prime then then the gcd or hcf of those two numbers must be 1 then that implies the two numbers are co prime so this is the testing for the co primes so when I want to test for two numbers to be co primes I just find the HCF of those two numbers and if I get the HCF to be 1 the HCF which is already discussed in the previous session if the HCF of two numbers is 1 then the two numbers are said to be co primes to each other so my statement here says that if any decimal value terminates with limited decimal values then it can be rational it can be expressed in rational form p by q and also its p and q will be co-primes and further q can be expressed in the form 2 power n 5 power m where n and m are non-negative integers so this is how I conclude the theorem but the whole of this concept is what we need to understand and very important so why did I say that Q can be expressed in the form 2 power n and 5 power m what is the need because whenever I wanted to convert the decimal value into the rational form I have taken divided by 10 power 10 power 10 power which is 100 as 10 square so whenever a decimal value is converted into the rational form the concept here comes that if the decimal terminates then I divide with 10 power the number of steps where the decimal has to jump to the right so this 10 power clearly makes me understand that 
since 10 has the prime factors 2 and 5 therefore each of 10 power n will have its decimal 2 power if I have 10 power k then this 10 power k can be written as 2 power n into 3 power into 5 power m so 2 power n into 5 power m is how I can express 10 power k so as can be clearly seen in case of 10 being with factors 2 and 5 so that's the reason I get here q always being in the form 2 power n and 5 power m the product of factors as I can see here 1 by 8 can be written as 1 by 2 power 3 so here n is 3 m is 0 in case of this this can be written as 1331 by 25 I can write it as 5 square which is 5 power m m is 2 and n is 0 because there's no 2 term 2 power term so everywhere I see the same concept similarly this can be written as 1 by 10 power 5 that is 2 power 5 into 5 power 5 and then m is 5 and n is 5 so every terminating decimal value which is expressed in its more simplified answer in rational form will have its denominator in the form 2 power n into 5 power m where n and m are non-negative integers is how I conclude the theorem. This is the theorem which supports the, the examples considered here. Now the previous theorem makes us understand on whether we can approach the similar sort of a theorem in the reverse process. Given a rational number can I express it in decimal form or given a rational number can I identify whether that can be expressed in the terminating decimal form. So is how we understand the same theorem going in the reverse process and it is very important because understanding the concept in the forward and backward process is more important in mathematics. So let's see with a couple of examples on rational numbers and then see if the decimals are terminating. So as I've taken in the previous theorem, clearly if the decimal is terminating, then its rational form will have the denominator q in the form 2 power n into 5 power m. So similarly, if my rational number has its denominator in the form 2 power n into 5 power m, then I understand that when I simplify that to a decimal, the decimal is terminating. It's quite simple. So let's see with an example. Converting rational number to decimal form. So when I want to convert, let's take one of the example problem 25 over 2. Now clearly this is a rational number in its most simplified form where p is 25 and q is 2. So before we proceed to understand whether the decimal would be a terminating decimal or a non-terminating decimal, then in this case, I identify firstly the value of q. Now here, p is 25 and q is 2. Now q is 2 which can be clearly expressed as 2 power 1 into 5 power 0. Therefore, clearly this being expressed in the form of 2 power n into 5 power m. So therefore, because of this reason, 25 by 2 in its decimal form will terminate. It is not a repeating decimal, but it will terminate. So as you can see in this, let's see how to what value does it terminate it's quite simple because when i want to just find the decimal value of this i simply divide because we know the division process through which we can find 25 over 2 taken in this form 2 12s 24 1 0 5 and 10 0 is the remainder therefore 25 over 2 is 12.5 is how I do it through the division process. There's another process through which I can find the same fraction converted to the decimal. So let's see how I can do that. So for example, I take the same problem 
25 over 2. Now, I always try to make the denominator as 10. So when you have the denominator as products of 2s and 5s, then making the denominator as 10 is the most urgent need in case of those problems. So for example of this, when I take 25 over 2, I can write this as 25 over 2 multiplied with 5 and divided with 5. The reason being that when I multiply 2 with 5 in the denominator, I get 10. My target is to make the denominator as powers of 10. Therefore, I can do that when I multiply 5 to the denominator and equally multiply to the numerator. So that I get this as 25 times of 25 is 125 and 2 times of 5 is 10 and this would give me 12.5 as the answer. Is the other way of doing the decimal value is with alternative method. So this is the alternative method through which you can find the decimal. Let's take another example. Now I have 7 over 80, where in this case P is 7 and Q is 80. Now my first target is to see if Q can be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m as in case of this. So let's see how we can do that. So when I take the factors of 80, 240s, 220s, 210s and 25s, as I can clearly see that 80 can be expressed as 4 multiples of 2 and 1 multiple of 5 so that 80 can be written as 2 power 4 into 5 power 1 so that clearly this is in the form of 2 power n into 5 power m where n is 4 and m is 1 m is 4 and n is 1 so this is how I clearly understand that because I can express q in the form 2 power n into 5 power m therefore the given rational number can be expressed as a terminating decimal the most important concept supported by the theorem. So let's see what is that terminating decimal value. So in this case, if I go by the alternative method as I proceeded here, similarly, I take the rational form 7 over 80 and because 80 can be expressed as 2 power 4 into 5 power 1, then clearly I understand that this when multiplied with this can be expressed as powers of 10 if I can make the powers of 2 and 5 to be same. Remember, we need to make the powers of 2 and 5 to be same and then only I can express the denominators as powers of 10. So as my power of 2 is 4, my power of 5 is 1, I need 3 5s to make this power as 4, thus balancing with the power of 2. Therefore, simply what I do is I multiply with 5 cube and divide with 5 cube so that when I multiply 5 cube with 5 power 1, by the first law of index, I get 5 power 1 plus 3, which is 5 power 4. And then the powers are same. So that is my target out here. So in this case, this will be 7 times of 5 cube by 2 power 4 into 5 power 1 plus 3, which is 4. So my target out here is reached because I have made both the powers of 2 and 5 to be same. And I made them same by multiplying with 5 cube and dividing with 5 cube equally. Therefore, this would give me 7 times 5 cube is 5 5 is 25, 25 5 is 125 by 2 power 4 into 5 power 4 by using the law of index a power m into a power n, a power m into b power m is a b whole power m. Therefore, I get this as 2 times of 5 whole power 4. So this is how I get by using the law of index 2 times of 5 whole power 4. The next step is I multiply this so that I get 7 5s, 35, 7 2s, 14, 7 1 7, 8 by 10 power 4. So 875 over 10 power 4 is what I get when simplified because 2 5s, 10 power 4. Now as I understand that the denominator is with 10 raised to 4, I have my decimals moving from here 4 steps to the left. So I have this moving 1, 2, 3 and 1, 0 added and to the 4th step. Therefore, the answer for 7 over 80 in its terminating decimal form would be 
zero point zero eight seven five the terminating decimal of this as obtained through the alternative method is how we get this way finding q identifying q to have in powers of 2 and 5 is the first step through which I understand the concept. So this is how I get the concept of terminating decimal and non-terminating decimal. Now with this example we support finally with understanding of rational numbers and decimal values of the respect to rational numbers as compared to each other. So let's take a, an example problem where the decimal is not terminating. So for example, I take 5. So in this case, 5 over 18 is clearly understood with P as 5 and Q as 18. And immediately, I want to express this as powers of 2 and 5. So let's see if I can convert this. So when I take this in the form, 18 can be written as 3, 6, 3, 2. So 18 can be written as 2 power 1 into 3 power 2. So, but clearly I understand here that the primes here are 2 and 3. But for terminating decimal values, I need to have P and Q, which Q, which can be expressed in the form 2 power M into 5 power N. But clearly I see that this cannot be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m because there is no phi here. So this makes me clearly understand that therefore phi over 18 is cannot be expressed. as a terminating decimal. It cannot be expressed as a terminating decimal value because it keeps on repeating. So let's see how it cannot be expressed as a terminating decimal value supporting the statement out here. So randomly I divide this 5 over 18 as 0 taken with decimal 18 twos 36 40 14 140 and 140 when taken 8 18 threes 18 fives So 7 times is 126 and then 14 again 7 126 and 14 again 0 7 times 126 and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. Therefore this is not a terminating decimal. It keeps on repeating and repeating. Therefore I get 5 over 18 as 0 0.27 bar the bar indicates it goes on repeating and repeating never ends as supported with the division here. So this is the how we get the values in decimal form when it is not expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m is one of the most important concept in the theorems 2 power m into 5 power m. So therefore the converse of the previous theorem can be modified and said to be holding true and let's take how the theorem reads. If any rational number P by Q has its Q in the form 2 power n into 5 power m then any q can be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m then the 
the rational number then that rational number is said to be expressed in is expressed is said to be expressed as a terminating decimal value so if any rational number p by q has its q in the form 2 power n into 5 power m then the rational number is said to be expressed as a terminating decimal value this is how i conclude the theorem by taking the supporting examples as discussed in the previous sessions so i can make a further theorem statement which says that if any rational number where q cannot be expressed in this form then the rational number will have a non-terminating decimal value which keeps on repeating as taken through this example. So when I write this example as a theorem, then I can write this as if any rational number in this case being 5 over 18, if any rational number P by Q has its Q which cannot be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m. As you can see clearly that this cannot be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m because I can raise this as 2 over 2 power 1 into 3 power 2. Therefore, this is an example which supports the theorem. Q which cannot be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m then that rational number cannot be expressed can be expressed I can take this as can be expressed as a non terminating repeating decimal non terminating or can also be called a repeating decimal value. It keeps on repeating. We get a non-terminating or a repeating decimal value if Q cannot be expressed in the form 2 power n into 5 power m. This example supporting the theorem.